welcome to my channel, The Amazing Guan Story. Today I will be learning about the Great Fire of London. Today I will share with you my homework with the research I did about the Great Fire of London. Let's begin. In 1666, London was, only, was not only the capital of England but one of the biggest cities in the world. It was a bustling place, heaving with people and buildings, and it was and its population was growing rapidly. In 1665, close to 100,000 Londoners, around a fifth of the city's population, died from the Great Plague, as a disease that haunted London. However, even with all these deaths, the number of people living in London was still enormous. And in 1666, the city was very different from one we know today. When Buildings were mostly made from wood, straw and tar-like substance called pit, which protected the wood from water damage. However, the pit also caught fire easily. In the poorest parts of London, the buildings were so close together that neighbours could lean out of their own homes and touch them, the house opposite. And the smell horse, drawn carts and carriages were pulled along the cobbled street, and animal mesh mixed with the waste from houses. There were few street sweepers and no sewer systems to keep the city clean. London was very noisy, very busy and very dirty. A long hot summer. London experienced an especially hot summer that year. In fact, very little rain had fallen across the whole of South in England. Buildings dried out, the ground became dusty and even London's main river, the Thames, was running low for so little rain, rainfall. There was no electricity to light or heat homes, so fire was an essential part of life. Family would build a in the houses to keep them warm and cook meals. When night fell, they would put out the warming flames and light candles to see by. So people needed fire to survive, but fire could be dangerous in a crowded city like Clund. Thomas Favener's Bakery. Thomas Favener owned a busy bakery on Pudding Lane in East London. He was a baker to Charles II, the king at that time. The large stone oven in the bakery was lit in the early hours of each morning and burned throughout the day. At night, as the bakery was closing, the flames were beaten down to ashes. But on Saturday, the 1st of September, 1666, no one made sure that the fire in Fallon's bakery had been properly put out. The oven continued to burn and no one noticed. Sunday the 2nd of September. In the early hours of Sunday morning, the Great Fire of London started. Some say it was because a hot ember fell from the oven and set fire to a nearby pile of wood. Others say that that Fallon had forgotten to sweep out the oven, which meant that the dying fire sprang up to life. Even Farina's name was blamed. Altogether, she never had the chance to deny this because she was one of the first people to be killed by the fire. By three o'clock in the morning, flames rose high above Pudding Lane and could be seen from a quarter of a mile away. A strong wind helped the fire move quickly, blowing its west from house to house. It fell on the drying wooden frames on buildings and licked up at attached to roofs and pitch, pu pushing southwards towards London Bridge. If the fire travelled across the bridge, everyone and everything south of the river would also be in great danger. Pepys Diving Samuel Pepys is now famous for the diving he kept between 1660 and 1669. He was a highly regarded Londoner because he worked as an administrator in the Navy and later became a member of Parliament. Pepys diary is more than a million words long and is packed with detail about his personal life and work. It also contains information on great moments in British history such as the coronation of King Charles II, the devastation of the Great Plague oh, and of course the Great Fire of London. In his diary, Pepys wrote that his maid rushed to tell him about the spreading fire. By and by, Jay comes and tells me that she bears that above 300 houses have been burned down tonight by the fire we saw, and that is now burning down all Fish Street by London Bridge. 
The only way to stop the fire from spreading was to create a fire break houses to, put, to be pulled down to create space between the fire and the buildings still standing. Most people didn't want to tear down their homes but nothing else would lose. nothing else would stop the fire. Pe Peeps went to, to King Charles and asked him to take action. The king was deeply troubled by Peeps' visit and sent him to deliver his message to the Lord Mayor of London, Sir Thomas Broadwell. The mayor was sent into a panic, shouting, Lord, what can I do? I have been pulled down houses, but the fire overtakes us faster than we can do it. The fire continued to spread west towards Fame Street to warehouses filled with oil and alcohol. This deadly combination fed the flames and made the fire even more dangerous. Monday the 3rd of September. Only a day after the first flames had escaped to the oven, the great fire was unstoppable. It raced through the city, destroying some of the buildings on London Bridge. But even the flames burned so brightly that night looked like day and ash fell from the sky like snow. Tuesday the 4th of September. By Tuesday, the fire was so hot that nobody could get close enough to fight it. The firefighting equipment was no match for the blaze, and when street force cathedral caught fire and Ludge, Ludgate Hill at a part of Fleet Street went to the flames, King Charles II ordered that as many buildings as possible be knocked down. Men, women, and children fled their homes, taking as much of them as they could carry. Even Worrying some of their belongings to protect them. Some people escaped on foot in carts and by boat, while others stayed to fight the fire. At its worst point, the Great Fire of London burned through a hundred houses in just one hour, but thankfully the strong winds were starting to be good. Wednesday, the 5th of September. On Wednesday, the smell of gunpowder gun caused the airs, houses, and shops were blown. Many important buildings, including, including street halls, cathedral, the royal enchantment, and in beautiful, couldn't be saved from the fire. The king took charge of the firefighting and organised groups of people to demolish buildings. Lines of men snakes from the river stains to, to riverside houses and shops that were still on fire, passing buckets of water between them. It was a slow process, but the biggest flames began to die down. More than three days after it had started, the great fire was finally under control. Lord, what, what sad sight it was by moonlight to see the whole city almost on fire. Once all of the flames were put out, East London was unrecognisable. Around 400 streets have been burnt to ground. 87 churches lay in ruins and more than 13 thousand houses were reduced to ashes. Amazingly, it was reported that fewer than 10 people had died in the fire. Most had, had escaped to the fields north of the city. It was in those fields, in Moorfields, Highgate and Islington that the rich and poor sent up tents and huts besides each other. Peeps were surprised to see that some weakly people had chosen to save their and cut instruments from the fire. South of the river flames was safe, but none could be rebuilt. King Charles II wanted to create a grand new city that would be the envy of Europe. With wide streets, beautiful parks, no overcrowded, but there just wasn't enough money for the, for the king's dream to be realised. Tradesmen needed to reopen their business quickly and families needed their homes to be rebuilt cheaply. 1668, two years after the Great Fire, new walls were put in place, meaning that buildings had to stand further apart from each other and be made from brick and stone instead of wood and straw. It would take 30 years for London to be rebuilt properly. In 1669, the, the act Architects Christopher Renders designed a, new, a brand new street called Cathedral. Altogether, it took almost 40 years for the Cathedral to be completed. It still stands proudly in London today. I hope you enjoyed this channel and I hope you enjoyed the book The Great Fire of London. Thanks for watching.